Hey Gunnar, we're all set. All right. Thank you, Matt. And welcome everyone to uh, the November 20th Mozilla Webmaker Weekly Community Call. This is our first post MozFest call of 2012 and we're really excited to see so many folks on the Etherpad. Let me turn everyone's attention to that Etherpad. It is etherpad.mozilla.org slash NOV20, capital NOV20. And on line uh, 84 are weekly updates which you can asynchronously consume at your leisure. Uh, lots of good blog posts and other coverage from the festival and around and about some amazing stuff that Jess has been up to and other really, really good reads. Then let me turn your attention down to line 105 where if at any point in this call you want to become audible, the instructions are there for unmuting your line and then in service to all, muting again when you are done speaking. Finally, line 110, Mozilla Festival, what made you happy or sad? I would encourage a gigantic round of virtual applause for the rock star who made MozFest rock, Michelle Thorne. Welcome and tell us what made you happy and sad about MozFest. Good. Um, <laughs> yes, I just wanted to, to hey, hey. Um, take the time to uh, catch up with folks while the memory of MozFest is fresh. Um, and to uh, share a few links first at the top just to say that it was epic and we really owe um, a huge thanks to everyone um, for helping put on such a good event, for running sessions, helping people make and do and all such, all such things. Um, I, if you haven't seen it yet, the line on 116 um, that the awesome media tent crew put together in like a fury last, at the last hour at the closing demo party, it's a really nice capture of what people made during the festival and I think speaks a lot to the ethic of as quoting Mark Sermon, fuck it, ship it, people who made things um, over that weekend um, and we're showcasing them on the closing Sunday. Um, and then on top of that, there's also, if you're interested in some of the particulars of what went down um, in each of the sessions, we've got a really good growing um, repository of notes and code and other sorts of artifacts that you can access um, uh, using the link on line 120. And then there's lots of other nice links including, importantly, I think, the ways, ways to keep the momentum going. So um, if you are saying, now MozFest is over and what can I do next to keep up the web making love, um, definitely take a look at the um, link on 123 for some ideas. And so I'm, I'm happy that people are already um, writing uh, ideas and suggestions. This is the main thing. I just wanted to take a few minutes to um, have people just brainstorm and write down what made what they uh, MozFest made you happy because it made you sad because um, and things that we should definitely keep in mind um, for next year. We really just want to roll in all this feedback um, into making it an increasingly better event and um, and more valuable for everyone who's there. So I'll be quiet for a moment. Um, if you've got questions and stuff, you can Etherpad chat me, but I'll just let people fill in the Etherpad for the moment. Ah, yes. What is the sound of one etherpad clapping? <laughs> Line 143 for the win. <laughs> oh. Cool. Okay, um, who's, who's on acid and said hosted in the O2? That was me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, that explains the O2 coverage. Uh, cool. Well, um, I definitely welcome people to keep adding stuff. Like th this, are, there's already a lot of good ideas and stuff in here, and you can um, put, I'll put my email here too, if you, in case you want to ping me at some point with something you, may, you maybe you didn't want to share on a public Etherpad. Um, but you can write to me. Um, and also just a heads up, we haven't yet scheduled it, but Gunnar and I are going to hold a kind of deeper dive, um, MozFest, how it went, get people's feedback, and also talk about um, ways to keep the momentum going and how people can get involved in MozFest planning for next year. It will be a community call 
the details are pending, but we're hoping to get that up and running soon. So if, if you're interested in learning about how you can help shape, a, shape MozFest at an even earlier point, like for example, how we could mo possibly make it in the O2, um, you should join that chat and we'll share the info soon. That's all for me. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. So um, anybody wanting to uh, add any thoughts or speak to anything? Oops. The etherpad has just gone away in my experience. So yeah, I think it's oh, for everybody, Gunnar. Right on. Well, I'd like everyone to please take a look at your etherpad and really appreciate the bold red service unavailable text and its aesthetic juxtaposition with the service temporarily unavailable statement. Um, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, well, actually, let's, let's see. Does anybody have any last thoughts on MozFest before we move to the next agenda item, which was Mark? predicting the future in a deterministic fashion. <laughs> All right. Well, I would, just, I would echo what Michelle said and, and say that I could not be more grateful. I think the thing that really made this year's MozFest fundamentally better than last year's, and I think there was a lot of things, including our familiarity with the venue, but I really think the fundamental difference maker was that on every floor in every space, People were incredibly patient, incredibly can-do, and incredibly creative about dealing with situations that failed to materialize as they had been slated, or situations that arose out of nowhere to create distraction and complexity. And as I walked around, the thing I just kept being gratified by was how many folks were just really, really turning situations into the best they could be and really creating the buzz that we got to feel feeding back down into every single plenary and especially into that final demo fest. That final demo fest was just off the hook in that one would assert as a jaded event organizer that by 6 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon of an intense event, people would want to drift on home and veg out in front of their respective surfaces. But uh, no, actually the energy at that final demo fest, we had to kick people out at 9 o'clock. And it was really a testament to all of the energy that had been fomented in all of the spaces and all of the hard work in the months that led up to that. So I just really want to put a fine point on the fact that the team effortness of this event really, really just was beyond anything I would have hoped for or I think anybody would have hoped for. So thank you to everyone for making it so unique. And <laughs> we've got 11 and a half months before we have to rally and do it again. So with that note, Mark, Sermon, tell us exactly what is happening in 2013 and exactly what we need to do to make that successful. So I have a plan to do a monthly Mozilla Festival starting in January. Um, nice. So yeah, what, um, I wanted to give people a preview of the fact that uh, the management team and, and a bunch of others are um, deep in the, the guts of planning our budget for next year uh, and doing our plan for next year, uh, which is an uh, important but thankless task of mostly figuring out what things we've already said we want to do uh, and putting them into a format that the board can understand and get excited about and uh, Marilyn can line it all up in the spreadsheet. And so that piece is not something that everybody needs to, to get their head around. That's our job. Um, but the other piece of it is really kind of getting on the same page about where we're headed next year, which we, we've actually spent really a lot of time at MozFest, for those people who are out the all hands, uh, and other things over the last three months kind of doing, uh, including in the last board slides, which if we had an etherpad, I would have linked again to the slide cast of. And so most of what we're doing in 2013 you guys have already seen from those slides. It's following through on the products we've already built, it's taking some of the insights that we've uh, got from the first four months being out there and, and rolling them into the product. Uh, oh, Matt just uh, pasted it into RC. Uh, and then kind of building out some more rigorous labs function where we can take new stuff we want to do like mobile and hackable games and do that in a way that feeds back into the product. So everybody knows all that. I don't need to go through the details. Um, but what we have to do now is actually kind of roll that stuff up into more of a vision of what, what that looks like that we can communicate to the world and to the community and kind of keep ourselves focused. Uh, take all the little things that are in that last set of board slides, like say adding social or building a gallery, and roll them up into a big picture. So, da -da -da -da, blocking the etherpad, let's see if I can throw the IRC. Um, there's three kind of top-level public-facing goals that, that I'm proposing as a kind of roll-up of what was in the last four slides. 
Uh, one is, uh, so all of them are focused on what is WebMaker going to be in 2013? And this is really focused on the WebMaker piece of what we're doing. So one is a popular way to make and remix content. The, I think a big shift for us now that we've got what we've got in Popcorn and Thimble and Badges is really going to be focusing on the thing that want to come and show up and use to make stuff. And that's going to be like not uh, different in terms of the foundations, but a different way of operating in terms of assessing whether we're getting there. And it's going to include like are people showing up, making things, coming back, all of those kind of metrics that when you're just getting the first MVP out, you, you can't do. We're going to have to do this year. The other thing that is inside there is going to be, I think, an increased focus on the content that is at the foundation of, uh, of Popcorn and Thimble. Um, as being something that's equal to or me more important than the tools. And so the starter project and the best stuff that people make being highlighted and all of, of that. Um, so that's, the, that's I think, the, the big new push that we'll have is really focusing on stuff that people want to make and focusing on content. Uh, and then, you know, of course, the second one is that everything we do levels up your web skills every time you make something, or maybe not every time, but that that's designed in. Uh, and so a lot of the stuff we built already as a foundation, we just need to really follow through like a complete set of badges, much more rigorous assessments, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and then the third is that we really want to push ourselves on having a global community of makers and mentors and, and this instructor community that Chris and Laura and others have been talking about since the all hands is something that will be a priority next year as the engine of this stuff both being grown and tested. So. My guess is there's, there's nothing in that that is controversial because it's just really a roll-up of, of kind of bullets of, that we've talked about before. But I want to throw those out just to see if there's any pushback or questions on them as public-facing goals. Because um, what we're going to do is slot all the specifics that we've talked about in the past underneath those. Um, so this is a chance to kind of to kind of push back or ask questions about those. There also are three internal-facing goals that I'll, I'll kind of talk about in a second, but I just want to pause and see if people have questions about these, either verbally or, or in IRC. And Mark, this is Ben, and I just want to encourage you to be a little closer to the mic as you speak. You've got a lot of background noise you're fighting against. Oh, that's odd. Okay. I'm, I'm, I, it's harder to be close to this mic, but... You're definitely sounding clearer now. So Doug's just asking uh, the fact that learning isn't uh, explicitly mentioned in those three bullets um, and wondering if that's by design. No. <laughs> Ask and answer. <laughs> the word interest-based is uh, banned from any public communication. But interest-based is at the core of what we're doing in a popular way to make and remix web content and leveling up your web skills every time you make something. Other questions? Those are both good, Carla and Doug, both good questions. And I think all those things are still in there, but I think they're not in our public communications about uh, Web skills include JavaScript, yes. Uh, I think there's a, a debate about how and when we do that. And I think that's going to be a good conversation we'll have, I'm sure, on this call and, and others about are we teaching people JavaScript, which lots of other people are out in the market doing, or are we adding JavaScript capabilities to Thimble and Popcorn that let you do more advanced things? Um, hey, this is Carla. Quick question about um, just the interest-based. Is there going to be a conversation about exactly what our language is with regards to our efforts? I'm sure we could have one, I and mean, we can have it now, but uh, or we can, we can have it another time. But I think interest-based, um, in particular is a really good thing for us to stay focused on as a group of people who are designing for learning and, and doesn't mean anything to most people even who are supportive of what we want to do. So I, I'm certainly um, open to, I think we should all think about what other ways to telegraph that if we're, um, if we're not using that language. And to Chloe's question, learning is definitely still in our public communications. Um, it just didn't fit in the poetry of bullet two. It, it could be in there. Although I, I guess you know, I can offer an opinion. I'm happy to, to have this as a debate as well. But I, I think from the board conversations and a lot of conversations at MozFest, um, you know, that there's both a feeling that learning is absolutely probably our pri top priority. 
uh, in terms of whether we're succeeding or not. Whether people are learning is what we're going to measure ourselves. Uh, and our thesis, especially if, if interest base is where we're led, um, is that um, learning, positioning ourselves as a learning product is not going to attract the kind or volume of people we want. Um, positioning ourselves as a creativity product or a social platform or a place to make things um, from a marketing perspective um, where we want to go. And I think, you know, in general, one of the things we're going to go through as we get to trying to grow this in a bigger way is um, shifting from what our own social and kind of um, impact-based goals are and then how we talk to the public about it. And I think that's a, a, we're at that inflection point of having to think about that a lot right now. I was just going to add that, I mean, I think overall we want to refine our public-facing messages about what WebMaker is. Uh, and I think a lot of what Mark's talking about here is about drawing a line between our marketing communications versus uh, how we just talk about the project internally and like not, not trying to ban terms for, from people, but about saying, be, being more deliberate about what we put forward publicly. And I think there's lots of time to do that together and that this document is not doing that. This isn't, this isn't a marketing communications document, this is a, uh, or an operational planning document that it, we're, we're trying to hone the, hone the story, but we're not trying to write marketing copy here. Yeah. So if there's any other questions on those, um, please speak up uh, or type in IRC. But I think I'm going to move from there on to internal goals. And just, I, I don't think I said this at, clearly enough at the beginning, what's going to happen now with these is the management team plus a bunch of others are going to start to look at all the various commitments, roadmaps, things we said in the last board slides and tie them back to these goals and see whether they work from that perspective. We'll bring that whole set of things back on, I guess, the December 4th, uh, whatever that two weeks from now is, WebMaker call. Um, and so there'll be lots of chance to kind of both plug into the, the details of these then, and if anybody wants to talk to me uh, or any of the other managers in the meantime, that's you know, totally open to doing that. So moving to internally. Um, and this is a bit of shift from last year where we really had, we had five goals and I, I'm kind of trying this idea out of having an internal and an external set. Um, it's not a totally clean division, um, but I think these are all things that we need to do that most of the community and certainly the public um, isn't going to care about. Uh, and so one is really creating a culture of excellence. And you know, not that we're not all excellent, but I think that we don't have a systematic way of saying that, like that's good enough yet, or even if that's good, how can it be better? And I think we also have a lot of different processes, a lot of different ways to measure ourselves. And frankly, there's lots of places where we don't have ways to measure ourselves. And, and so Ryan in particular is um, on deck as being the uh, meister of excellence and helping us for you know, real figure out what metrics we're going to use this year tying them back to all of the goals that are in here, uh, building processes for, for having that kind of feedback be a regular part of like these calls uh, as well as, as you know, team calls. So that, that's a piece that may seem flaky, but I think is actually probably the most important thing we can do this year. Um, the, the next piece is teeing up a solid long-term funding and resource base. Sounds self-evident, but um, you know, one of the things that we've done is bootstrap WebMaker with grant money and with money from Mozilla's own capital reserves. We spend about $2 million a year of, of our own money from the bank, which is an ever-diminishing pile, um, as well as about 4 or $5 million in grant money. Uh, and so one of the things we want to do is really build up the individual donations or major gifts, kind of rich people helping us build an endowment or eventually commercial revenue. Um, so that we've got an even stronger base than we do now. Uh, not that we're running out of money, but, uh, but certainly that's where we want to get. Um, and so I think we'll actually start to have fundraising be a part of these calls um, on a kind of every month basis where Jeffrey and others give us an update of like where we're at. Uh, and then the, the last one, which as I read it sounds incredibly boring and is probably the most exciting of all these, which is establish a regular flow of new product ideas. Um, we will probably set up some uh, group of people slash conceptual container, which is a, a labs sort of function. Um, 
And people may or may not know that David Asher is in the process of trying to reboot what labs means inside of Mozilla, which isn't something just in MoCo and isn't something just for kind of playing around, but is a place we can go and ask product questions. So, for example, what are hackable games? How do we start? Um, you know, there's things we know we want to get into and how to get into them. Um, and so one of the things this year is to actually find a way to rigorously ask those questions in a way that we can play and try stuff out, but then we can say that worked, that didn't work. Let's put more resources into this. Or let's pour more resources. Let's not put more resources into that. Um, and then there you go, David Asher. Just as I talked about labs, the IRC. Um, so those are those are the more internal uh, facing goals. Um, again, not totally clean of what's internal, external. Of course, the lab stuff will be very open and very community focused, um, but it's not you know the, the kind of core product piece. So I'm. Um, any questions or minus ones or plus ones on any of that stuff? Oh, we're back in the Etherpad. Sorry, I'm in IRC still. Uh, so, did the JavaScript one come before? I guess it's because it kind of goes up to uh, above. So, on the JavaScript one, I think I'm not the right person to lead that conversation, but I, I think that there is there are both of the options that are there about um, teaching JavaScript per se or teaching web making with some JavaScript embedded. So that's a conversation which Aaron, David Asher, Chris McAvoy, and a bunch of other people are, are having and I think can lead a, a larger conversation on. You see Ross's questions. See Ross's. Will the lab stuff be run by Mozilla Labs or is this like a MoFo Labs thing? So that, yeah, sorry, I'm going between two screens. Thank you for helping me navigate. Um, so, there, yeah, there really isn't a, um, a Mozilla lab to run it. So, I mean, the, there is, um, you know, Todd who, who runs what used to be Mozilla Labs is much more actually driving the services side of what MoCo is building, uh, including the, the marketplace. And so David is in the process of figuring out how we reinvent labs, ideally as a cross Mozilla type of activity. Um, so, you know, to be you know, to, to be determined how that would work. But we would certainly run our own group, which is um, for now focused on the web maker side of labs or some of the stuff that we're doing that is in journalism or in science that um, pushes the edges of what we're doing in web maker. So w we would still have control of that and have people that have budget. Um, but I, ideally, it's under a bigger Mozilla wide labs banner and, and set of kind of methodologies. So there's a question about, or a point about uh, using social blogs, YouTube, Tumblr, whatever, in terms of being at a bigger scale. And I'm not sure what the question part of that is, but certainly if you go back to last month's board slides, um, you know, one of the, the things that's a pretty strong uh, point in there is that social, both as a way to bring content into Popcorn and Thimble, as we saw with like TBS AdLibs, um, but also as a distribution channel. So like I made something in Popcorn, I put it out in Facebook, people can hit Remix to get pushed back into Popcorn. All of those kinds of functions with like a heavy amount of social as our distribution channel for what people make in WebMaker, as well as a way for people to come back into WebMaker, um, I think is going to be quite central to, to what ends up in, in Roadmap next year and is in what we talked to the board about. So I don't know if that addresses the comment on line 227 or not. Anything else that I haven't seen? I'm looking at IRC. I'm looking at the Etherpad over Mary's shoulder. All right. So as I say, you know, I don't think there's anything shocking in there. I think we've got like the right people to do this. Uh, we're going to get a few more. Uh, I think we've got generally the right direction we're in. So I think anything people are working on post mod stuff is probably still the right stuff if it feels like follow through from from what we started before. Uh, and this is going to be just sort of how do we actually get to the next level? Who do we need to add to the team to get to the next level in terms of this being something that people, you know, that's popular and that people want to use and people want to make stuff with, um, which I think we're, we're teed up well to do. Uh, and feel free to ping me uh, any conversations you want to have on this. Um, the next two weeks are a good time to do it. I'm not traveling anywhere. 
Um, I've kind of cleared my schedule to just talk to people. There's lots of conversations going on, so feel free to reach out. Do you want to say anything about what you what this group will hear from us over the coming couple of weeks? Yeah, so I've, I already said, but I'll, I'll reiterate. So two weeks from now, uh, that we'll come back with this list plus you know, basically a, a set of specific objectives and a set of specific metrics. Um, and uh, in, so that'll be for this group to kind of feedback on, which will still leave us at least a week before the board meeting. So that'll be you know, probably a pretty chunker, chunky webmaker call in, in two weeks. Uh, and then we will, of course, come back with a more refined version of that, plus hopefully some idea of kind of key hires and how we're moving ahead into 2013 after the, the uh, board meeting, which is on the 12th of December. Um, but I, you know, I think one of the things I would say, just as a, a thank you and a congratulations and a, a piece of feedback from, from MozFest to all of you, uh, you know, is, is Mitchell, who you know, is uh, a visionary and has been supportive and is a big part of this, but is not often, um, you know, she gives you praise when you really deserve it. Uh, she kind of looked around MozFest on the last day, and, and I was kind of walking away, and she kind of like pulled me back and gave us the, the sort of high five. And you know, there is very strong support from this board for what we're doing, and so this is about getting them excited and getting us focused going into next year. And I think there's there's sort of no question of coming out of that with um, with anybody saying no to to this. I think we're we're we've got their backing, and we're going in a direction they're excited about. All right. Right on. Any any other questions, thoughts? <clears throat> well, thank you very much, Mark. Super exciting stuff, and definitely fun to sort of see this springboarding out of the festival. That's what the so festival is for, I heard. I'm looking at the Etherpad, and it looks like we have already arrived at the nonverbal updates. Uh, are there any other agenda items that people might be interested in surfacing on this call? Because otherwise, we will end early in compliance with the Geneva Convention on undersized meeting agendas. Excellent. Well, beautiful people, with 33 minutes gone in the hour, we thank you for an incredibly rich uh, conference call and look forward to seeing you all again on this same line next week, same time. So thanks, Mark. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Matt, and everybody else who made this call happen. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Please stand by.